Hi everybody, it's Lace, and uh, I want to start highlighting some of my favorite hunting areas for different reasons. And the first one I'm going to start off with is uh, North Brightbone Woods. And the reason I like this area is, I don't know exactly when it was, maybe around R30 or something. We used to have to do, uh, well it was before that, but we would do hat quests. And these quests would have us run around different areas doing a quest, and we got a hat. Now, players can no longer receive those, but you certainly can buy them um, from players that created or uh, finished the quest um, before. So you can buy them, but you wouldn't have earned them in the same fashion that we did. And this is kind of one of the things that the devs did in, in uh, early development is to give us a sense of ownership to the game and a unique item by going and exploring the new worlds that they had created. And when they um, first uh, put North Brightbone Woods into the hat quest thing, I remember it was in a very scary area that I remember dying just to complete this part of the hat quest. Um, but I since came to love this area because one, it's got a nice circular route in its design. It is an uncloned scene as far as I know, so it's pretty much finished and done. It has great fishing. It has clay. Um, it's one of the, you know, places that you can get clay. There's some underground sewers and stuff that have clay, but I kind of like the clean clay that I get out of a lake, such as in North Brightbone Woods. And clay, for those that don't know, are used to make uh, perhaps the beer krug, some of the porcelain vases, and other things. There's not a lot of places to get clay, but I love getting clay here. The second thing I like getting in North Brightbone Woods is there's quite a circuit of um, cotton bushes that you can run a circuit. If that's your focus, you can kind of run a little circuit to do cotton bushes to get beetle carapace, which is used for some of the high-end armor. In addition, there's quite a bit of uh, uh, wood that you can do to get some of the barks and, and resins or whatnot um, for those higher-end pieces of gear. Then also, there's actually a section where you can do um, humanoid mobs and magic users where you might get a bundle or, or different things like that golden stuff obviously drops from the humanoid mobs. But then there's also a section where you can do animals so you can get hides and stuff. So that no matter what you're trying to get, North Brightbone Woods has some of everything. And you can run different circuits because of the way that the zone's designed to do whatever you want and skip kind of the things that you don't want. There's even mining here. It's, um, it's absolutely one of my favorite zones. It's a T4. I think you can do it probably is a low t3 um and i still go there even though i'm past quote unquote t5 perhaps in my eyes not always because i do die but um i still go here because i just really like the layout of the zone the look of the zone and i can come here and i know that i'm going to get certain materials i'm not going to go here to farm producer xp because it's not the fastest rate but i am going to go here when i'm looking for specific types of materials. Now to access North Brightbone Woods, I'm going to bring up Emma on the map and I'm going to show you from our door. So our door is here. So I'd basically be going northwest and then just kind of jogging a little bit northeast. That's the route that I'm going to kind of take. Um, right here is, uh, what is that? Uh, that's one of the mountain passes, Brightbone Pass. Okay, so if you're coming from the north, you can go through Brightbone Pass and hook up. Um, but I'm just kind of trying to show it in relation to some of the lower zones. So, like, here's our Doris in the very south. Then we've got uh, Soul Town and stuff here. We've got DeSolus, but you'd have to go through East Reach Gap and then come along this way to get up to Brightbone, uh, North Brightbone Woods. Additionally, near Bright, North Brightbone Woods is Spectral Mines, which is my favorite place to go for producer XP. Um, you're only going to get iron. Uh, you're not going to get any uber other things other than that. Um, but I also like that area. So this is kind of why I still like these two sections here. But of course we're talking about North Brightbone Woods right now. And not so much the iron mining. But uh, this is still a go-to spot for me. Even as a T5 plus adventure level person. Because of the variety of things I can do. And there's even a giant lake where I can do fishing and stuff like that. It's just, I just, it has everything in this zone. It's very well designed. There's several different circular circuits that you can run. 
uh, to go and harvest depending on what it is you're focusing on. Or you can just go and just run the circuits and collect a little bit of everything. Um, it's really up to you. So let's dive in and look inside of it a, a little bit deeper. Coming inside the uh, west quote unquote default entrance, we're just basically going to run up the path. There might be some deer or things right here, but we're not really concerned with that. What I'm going to show you is this lake. And uh, this is the lake circuit. This is one circuit, one circular circuit that I like a lot. And we can already see clay, clay, and uh, there might be some clay around here. And the clay is going to typically be deposited around the lake. So if you're trying to just make a bunch of beer krugs or porcelain vases and stuff, you can just keep swimming around the lake. Now there's going to be some mobs. You can see a wandering humanoid mob that starts at this. You can see a statue here, and it's pretty cool, and we'll get there in a second. But he kind of roams the path here. In addition, you've got some uh, wolves and bears and stuff up and th through here. Um, but usually I just really come in straight down the path, and I go right. And when I go right, I'm going to see um, lots of trees. Um, some chopped down perhaps depending on how the spawn is and and then I'm gonna see my cotton bushes so if you're looking for resin or barks you've got a very good start of running a circuit around this lake just doing wood um, in addition you can do a clay circuit if that's what you want you can do like I said before a circuit of everything you're gonna have some deer running around you're gonna have some wolves around here they're gonna take out the deer but you're also gonna have these cotton bushes and while it might not look like much, trust me, this is one of the more heavily concentrated uh, cotton areas that I've found. So I can come around here, you know, there was two bushes, and I'm not really fighting this guy hard or anything. I'm kind of just trying to look around to tell you more stuff. But um, I can do all these wolves and stuff and go around and get these cotton bushes. So I'd want to get this one here, that one there. Now I have two choices at this point. I can jog around to the other side of this, which is going to take me to some more cotton bushes. And I, that's kind of my route. I also got ore, okay. Um, and I typically kind of come around here because I got about three to four cotton bushes back here. If I'm doing cotton, again, I'm talking about cotton. I got a cotton bush. I got a bear that I might have to, a bear two that I might have to contend with. But I've got one cotton bush there, one cotton bush here. I got a cotton bush over here. I've got some wolves that I might have to contend with here. And then back over here, there's yet another cotton bush. And sometimes I get a group of uh, possibly I might get one or two uh, humanoid mobs from here. Now, if I'm a hunter and I also want to do my hunting thing, I can run in here and start taking out all these humanoid mobs. Look, see, this guy saw me. Oops, my bad. Um, but there's a whole scary little thing you can get going on back there with a lot of XP because there's a lot of humanoid mobs back there. There's additionally another section I'm going to show you for humanoid mobs, but we're just kind of doing cotton bushes right here because I still feel that beetle carapace is far too scarce in the game, and this is my best place for beetle carapace. Uh, again, wolf, uh, tree, tree, couple bears up there. Yay. Um, but we're kind of, I'm just kind of, I'm showing you the trees and stuff and the wolves and bears if that's what you're into. But I'm really trying to focus on what I think is one of the scarcer components, and that's the uh, cotton bush. Another cotton bush here, another cotton bush up there. Then I come around here, and uh, there's a cotton bush up here. Okay, you can see them. And, and you're going to have to fight for these cotton bushes. Um, but again, remember, you know, there's some more iron back there, and there was some other. Around that wolves den, there was more. There's sometimes the trees up here. So getting the trees. And then I'm back to the other side. Of, remember, we started and we went on to the right side of that. So this is the circular route that I'm talking about. We went around this way, kind of did a little circuit. Now we're back over here. And uh, sometimes the wolves will kill the stags or vice versa. And you get a free skin out of that. So remember, um, sometimes the mobs fight each other. The AI fights each other. And you can loot that stuff. You can skin that stuff. You won't have gotten the uh, kill XP from it. But you can definitely get the producer XP if they kill each other. Again, you can see another tree stump that we could have gotten. Sometimes there's some clay. We can see a fishing hole. Okay, and like I said, we saw that when we came in. There was a guy wandering up and down the path. That guy right there. He, his walk kind of starts from here. 
and he goes up and down the path, and sometimes he screws around with the uh, wolves and bears over there. Um, but anyway, this is another place that you can now go off and fish if you take care of him. So you can work on your fishing uh, with the good chances. And for those of you who don't know, while you can fish anywhere, when you see these little bubbles and you cast into that area, you have a higher percentage chance of actually catching something. So um, keep that in mind. Okay, got another tree. We got our clay. Again, we're just working our way back in to where we zoned in, which was like right up there. We're just this is just one little circuit. And what do we have? Another cotton bush right there. Doesn't have anything on it, but it is a spawn point. Got another cotton bush here. More clay. This guy's gonna start shooting us. There's some bears usually around here. Um, there's more uh, uh, ore nodes around here. And then what do we have? Usually a wolf and what? <gasps> cotton bush and then a tree. So you can see why I like this for cotton bushes, and that's just one part of the zone. This is just one tiny fraction of the zone that we're covering. Now I'm just going to run this guy off by going back to the entrance, and that's just one particular loop that you could take. And you don't even have to do that side jog that I did into the deeper wolf quote-unquote area that I call it. Um, you could just go around the lake, and depending on how fast you kill things, um, that's going to kind of set your path. Um, so again, you don't have to be uber to go and hunt here, and you're going to find that people are going to pay pretty good dollars for beetle care paste, pine resin, maple bark, uh, pine bark, and things like that. Um, the alternative to this is you'll see a lot of people, wood's gotten a little bit cheaper, but that's wood, and wood scrap has gotten cheaper, um, but not those key components. The only way to get pine resin tree barks and things like that is to actually harvest trees. You can get wood and wood scrap from sieges, but you can't get these pieces. So that's kind of why I'm showing you this, because as a new player, being able to sell these little tiny components that the higher end crafters would want, this could help you um, make bank. And, and then also as a higher end crafter, knowing where to go and probably get more of a percentage on these because of the you know amount of spawn areas there are, this is a good place to hunt. And that's why me, even as T5+, Plus, I keep coming back to this because it's just got a natural route, it's beautiful, and it's got lots of cotton bushes, it's got lots of trees for me, and if I want, you know, skins and hides and stuff, I can get those. I'm not going to get obsidian wolf carcasses or, uh, you know, obsidian bear carcasses because there's none here. I think the highest thing I've seen is an elder wolf. But I can still get animal hides and things like that. So it works very well for low players and high-end players too, depending on what your needs are. Now, again, from the starting entrance, the default entrance, there is another path. You may not see it. Now, we went down to the river, and I showed you that. But you can kind of go this other way. What direction is that? Well, a little bit east, southeast. Um, and you can get here either from the shortcut from the river, and I'll show you that way too, but this is a different way, and this is a different sort of encounter. You're going to have archers, you're going to have mages, but you're going to get cotton. There's quite a lot of cotton, there's quite a lot, of, and I'm just kind of running through here training right now. Just get some healing up so I don't die. You've still got your ore. Again, you've got, you know, trees, cotton. Um, you've got a lot more humanoid mobs to deal with. You've got some bears up there. And there's some ore up there, but again, more trees. Can you see how nice this area is with trees and bushes? So if you're really, it, you've got wolves, so you've got skins and stuff. And there's even another exit entrance, which is the south one, so you could also come in that way. Um, but you're really going to contend mostly with humanoid mobs up through here. I'm kind of just looping around. Um, and stuff and these ruins and sometimes you can get ganged up on so I wouldn't go into this section unless I'm a little bit higher and prepared for it because it's probably a little bit harder of the area as com as um, compared to the other area that I showed you around the lake but again you've got quite a lot of trees and, and these are the new trees as of you know R51 you can see that there's pine and maple so you've got you know a mix of that uh, there's quite a few cotton bushes you've still got your wolf stuff and we showed you the bear 
So it's a little bit different area, but I find it a little bit more challenging because you have all these casters in here. So while you're hunting a wolf, then you also are going to get all these casters. And look, they've got some super secret uh, cult thing going on. That's a little scary, right? So again, this is just a beautiful area that's just got a lot going on that you can discover. And a lot of times the world builders don't want to give away the secrets. And I'm kind of running around here giving away a bit of the secrets. But I'm giving away the secrets in so much as to show you um, all your different harvestables. You know, you can see all the, you know, new tree uh, skins and stuff and things. So, um, again, depending on what you're trying to do, if you're trying to kill moths for XP, if you're trying to get wood or get cotton, um, this is just another little circuit, circuitous route that you can take. And again, it comes in from the south. I showed you also from the default entrance. And then we're going to run back to what I call my my uh, go-to place, and that's that circuit basically around the, la uh, the lake. This is another little side area, and you know, you can do it. And it's stuff in here, and I do do it sometimes, especially if I'm just going all trees. I will run through here and kill all these guys just to get the trees. But now we're back to there's our bear, there's our cotton bushes, there's our wolf area with the two cotton bushes, and it goes back into this huge area with tons of mobs. And you can actually run around the side of this fort, and there's a little bit of stuff where you can come in behind, maybe take a few of those guys out a little bit more sneakily and stuff but then again we'll come back to our cotton bushes and then run around to the wolf kind of area and the cotton bushes there or we can come back around to the lake area and again we're heading west back behind this wolf's den that we came in um, earlier in the video so there's definitely um, several circuitous routes that we could take depending on what you're hunting again more or and, and this is our lake area that I just find so beautiful. And I really like just like running laps around the lake. Um, and the great thing about hunting in this game is um, sometimes there's no place to take a break, right? You need to go to the bathroom. Well, the great thing about this lake is I can just run out into the lake and I can go to the bathroom here and I'm not going to die. And then I can come back and start hunting again. So running out into a lake especially in a circular route, is fantastic because, you know, I can go around, kill everything, do whatever I'm going to get, the trees, the bushes, the cotton, the, the clay, whatever, and then I can run out here and go to the bathroom, and I can come back and I won't be dead because the mobs are not going to chase me this deep in the lake. Um, that might be seen as gaming the system, but I use it to go to the bathroom and not have to run all the way back to the entrance. And here's another thing. When you run all the way back to an entrance... Um, depending on the scene that you're in, sometimes the mobs chase you all the way back to that entrance. So we're just going to run, hopefully get our dash off. I don't have a uh, light armor on, so my dash takes a minute to cast there, a few casts. Here's another little tip and trick. Uh, when you go to a scene entrance, a lot of times you'll have a wall or something. And I don't know, I don't think this is a hack. But I will do this. Instead of standing here, I've seen mobs come to this point. Even when you start getting to the black, I've seen mobs still attack me there. But what I've not seen is if I go and stand here, I can go to the bathroom. And it's not hurting anything. I'm not really gaming the system. But it's where I go to the bathroom. Because I'll hide behind a wall because they can't see me. And I think it works. If you die doing this, don't blame me. You know, I do the same thing, but this is how I go to the bathroom sometimes. So anyway, um, I hope you... Oops, got a little stuck there. Hopefully, um, you see why I love this zone so much. Even though I just... I, it's a T4 zone, but I still come back to it all the time because of the plethora of cotton bushes, the plethora of trees... I can skin things, I can mine things, I can do anything. I don't get quite as much producer XP as in a T5 zone, but I just love it. It's pretty to me. I got clear paths, I can do things. I've got places that I can take a break if the phone rings, you know, or, or whatever. I got places to go to the bathroom, I, I can just run to very quickly, not losing my place. It's, um, it's 
it's one of my favorite zones. And again, I was so scared of it because of how it was introduced in the Hat Quest. We had to go into that zone, that uh, encampment, I believe, is where the checkpoint was to uh, for the Hat Quest. I remember it scared the hell out of me, but uh, it, it later became one of my favorite places, and it's still one of my favorite places to hunt. So take care, everybody. Happy hunting, be safe, and don't be scared of this T4 zone. It's wonderful.